Police officers from the UK are going to show American cops how it's done. This is basically a lesson on how to de-escalate a dangerous situation. Now, just so everybody understands, I'm not saying George Floyd was was dangerous because he wasn't, okay? Uh, there's no evidence of that. But I really think this this contrast that you're going to see, what policing is like overseas versus what it's like here, this, is, this could be a real eye-opener for a lot of people out there who just kind of casually assume that, like, what do you mean? The cops always have acted a certain way, and that's the only way that cops act. No, if you have if you have certain rules, if you have a certain philosophical approach to dealing with this, things can be very, very, very different. So this is a video, I'm not sure when this is from, probably within the last, you know, 10 years or so this happened, but look at how cops in the UK de-escalated a genuinely dangerous situation. From the UK, an amazing video for edged weapon training. London police engage with a distraught man wielding not scissors or a knife, but a machete, all captured on a smartphone from across the street. His ability to move is not completely obstructed by either the officers or by the vehicles, but he is more or less surrounded. You can see the man pacing around on the street or moving forwards and backwards, side to side, front and back. Each of them trying to continue to verbally de-escalate the situation over a period of time. It, you could probably say they've contained him without restraining him. And they keep this situation going backwards and forwards for some minutes whilst other officers are bringing uh, what we would call uh, public order shields uh, to, the, to the location. And in a coordinated movement, they move towards him um, so that he could, there's, there's no way he's going to be able to use that weapon or go anywhere else. He's, he's ended up placed on the ground with the use of the shields, the weapon's taken from him, and then he's stood up and handcuffed and detained. The incident ends with a man taken to hospital. Do you think that man would have survived in North America? No. No, he wouldn't have survived. Wouldn't have survived a couple of minutes, probably. So what's to be learned from that? Well, it is doable without firing your firearm. I don't even need to say anything. I don't even need to say anything. Listen, I'm... In American, just like most of the people watching this show, you know, demographics are overwhelmingly Americans watch the show, although there are people from all around the world, but, you know, I also had like a little bit of a casual, lazy assumption of like, well, I mean, in a situation like that, where a guy's got a machete, like, yeah, what are you going to do? You got to defend yourself. If you shot him, that, that would have been considered an absolutely justifiable police shooting in the U.S., there's not a jury in the country that would have convicted a cop who shot that guy. But you don't have to do that. Like, there are ways to de-escalate that we know work, proven tactics that are used everywhere else. And then here's the key point, guys. It actually values people's lives. And that's just something we clearly don't have here. And I don't know how far you want to stretch this conversation, but you could talk about this in the context of our endless wars, our militarism, our empire. You know, the fact that we're bombing like eight different countries right now, still in Iraq, still in Afghanistan. Like, we just don't value human life that much. And again, I mean, that to me, that video says everything about how messed up our system is. And I don't, it's not like, yes, we can have conversations where we blame specific cops, but like, the point is, we shouldn't have a system that allows anybody to act like they act in this country. Like, I honestly blame the rules, the laws, the politicians at every level of government. I feel like I blame them more because you could have set up a system where they act morally, ethically, reasonably, but they didn't. They kind of glorified this idea of a monopoly of violence, sort of like authoritarian overlords who 
kind of get a green light and are in a separate category. It's supposed to be, in a civilized society, the idea is supposed to be that nobody's above the law. But clearly, I mean, again, the only one I could think of in this country where they found a police officer guilty was the Walter Scott shooting. And it was on tape, and it was so obvious that nobody could deny it. You know, whereas everyone that's like, even a borderline one, even where you're pretty sure the cop's guilty and they're going to find him guilty. If there's any little wiggle room, it's like, not guilty. So, anyway, again, every time we ha we do these segments on, on policing, I'm always compelled. I know you guys have heard me say this a thousand times, but I'm going to say it a thousand more. I'm just warning you in advance because I like, I only like talking about this stuff, but I, if I could also give you the solutions. Okay, so, how do we get to a place where... Our police officers act more like that. Implement the campaign zero reforms. End broken windows policing. Have community oversight boards so there's more accountability. Limit the use of force that cops can, can use strictly, just like they did in this situation. Independently investigate uh, and prosecute cops who do wrong. Have community representation in the police. Have body cameras on the on the cops that cannot be turned off by penalty of law. Train and, and emphasize de-escalation, new training. End for-profit policing, that's a no-brainer. Demilitarize the cops, that's a no-brainer. Have fair police union contracts that hold them accountable. Right now, they protect, protect them come hell or high water. And most importantly, end the drug war. End the drug war, which really just gives cops a green light to over-police poor communities and communities of color. So this is what we have to do. There are answers. There are solutions. I don't want to be like fully nihilistic here, okay? Although long term, I am more of a pessimist than an optimist. But I'm not going to be nihilistic and tell you guys, oh, there's nothing we can do. Let's just throw our hands up in there. No, there are clear things we could do. If other countries have managed to set up a system a hell of a lot more reasonable than ours, then Jesus. I mean, I read a stat yesterday. Since 2014, the Michael Brown killing, you know how many... How many people have been killed by police officers in the United States? 6,000. Now, I don't remember where I saw it, so please, by all means, fact check me uh, if you'd like. Or, you know, see, see what the numbers are on your own here, but that's something that I read yesterday. Um, stunning. 6,000 people. Compare that to the number of people who die at the hands of police in other developed countries. Some of them, sometimes they have zero in a year. I'm not kidding about that. There's a better way to do it, and we need to go down that path and do it now.